From its shores on the Long Island Sound to its northern hardwood forests, Connecticut has been blessed with great natural resources. And through the years, one organization, Audubon, has been there to help protect these treasures. With its location along the Atlantic Flyway, this state serves as a critical migratory stopover point for birds, a place where great biological diversity benefits wildlife and people alike. Fortunately, Connecticut has also been blessed with people who've had the foresight to protect its beauty. Families like the Clovises, Moors, Miles, Fords, Clarks, and Conovers. Through theirs and others' leadership and generosity, Audubon has been able to create sanctuaries and centers that over the course of 70 years have not just protected the land, but have also nurtured a love of nature in successive generations of Connecticut families. In 1942, Greenwich residents Eleanor Clovis Reese and H. Hall Clovis conceived of what was then a revolutionary idea. They would donate their land to Audubon, not only to protect it, but also under the condition that Audubon establish a nature education center there. They were some of the first people to see how centers could act as gateways to a lifelong appreciation of and desire to protect the natural world. Since then, the Audubon Center of Greenwich has grown to provide critical open space to people and wildlife, living in one of North America's most densely populated areas. With so many young people spending time in front of the computers and video games, with less time spent in the woods, it's critical now, more than ever, that we support Audubon Nature Education Centers. When Kevin and I were asked to be part of building the new Audubon of Greenwich Center, we were thrilled. Every time we visit the center, we see another inspirational, educational, or science project. What's really exciting for us is to know that when people leave the center, they take with them the knowledge that they've gained there, and it really impacts the way they understand the importance of the natural world in their daily lives. Sharon, Connecticut is where New England's northern hardwood forest reaches into the Litchfield Hills. It's also where Clement and Keo Ford had seen how important growing up close to nature had been for their two daughters. So in 1961, they donated their Bog Meadow Farm to Audubon as a place where people from all walks of life could learn about and enjoy the wonders of nature. And with the additional help from the Miles family, the Sharon Audubon Center was born. They not only preserved a slice of heaven that today 15,000 people enjoy every year, they also protected a forest ecosystem that is essential habitat to three quarters of all neotropical birds, birds like the beautiful wood thrush. Today, the Sharon Audubon Center is one in a string of Audubon pearls that protect vital habitat up the eastern seaboard and along the Atlantic Flyway. Our work creating Audubon centers while protecting significant tracts of land continues today. One of the newest, Audubon's Bent of the River Center, lies in Southbury. Amazingly, this tract of 660 acres has only had three owners since European settlement. The second, the Clark family, donated it to Audubon in 1993. Today, its extensive grassland habitat is one of the few spots in the state where species in decline, like the prairie and Canada warbler, can be found nesting in good numbers. Salt meadows once spanned the eastern seaboard from Maine to Florida. Today, only a tiny fraction survives. Visit Audubon's Guilford Salt Meadow Sanctuary, and you can experience 200 acres of this formerly expansive ecosystem. That's thanks to Anne Conover, who in 1964 organized a group of her neighbors in Guilford to donate pristine salt marsh to Audubon. There were probably 10,000 acres of tidal wetlands along the Connecticut coast to begin with, and at that point it was down to about 3,000 or so, and she saw the absolute need to protect what was left. And critical habitat it is. Today, scientists estimate that more than a quarter of the global population of salt marsh sparrows nest within 30 miles of this site. 
Little did Anne know her actions would represent the toehold of an entire East Coast strategy to protect salt marshes. Since 2005, Audubon has helped raise more than $50 million for acquisition of critical shoreline habitat and its protection along the entire Long Island Sound. Connecticut holds examples of some of North America's most varied and important ecosystems. We all should be very proud that the state has acted for generations as a leading example of what Audubon is trying to accomplish in North America. However, to continue and expand this foundation of conservation ethic, it requires us to make continual choices and take actions every day about how we live our lives, what resources we use, and what we want to protect. Only with your help can we make this happen. This tree behind me is probably two or three hundred years old. And the reason it's here today is because stewards of this land that preceded me and that will succeed me have taken care of this. I've been involved in conservation battles for over two decades, and the one constant is that in every one of those battles, Audubon is standing shoulder to shoulder, whether it's here in Long Island Sound or down the Florida Everglades. If you want to save wonderful resources like this for future generations, make sure that you contact your local chapter. You become an advocate. Be a fighter. It's the only way we'll save this wonderful country for our children. Thank you.